we have too many assumptions, right, about how the world works, right? And they they grew up in a different world than we grew up. So I'm, you know, that that to me is just very exciting, right? Uh, you know, the next generation is gonna keep pushing it one step further, two steps further, right? And and that's how we make progress. blow up like a, a UST or something, right? You do things fast. If you want to be really safe, you do things extremely slowly and extremely methodically. From the angle and perspective of the storyteller and marketer, if you will, I think by you guys and Maker doing this also bring a quite different narrative or quite different example for the rest of the industry that even everybody else or a lot of people are moving fast or claim that they're moving fast or having news left and right. But it doesn't have to be like that way for everybody because maybe a lot of time it's much better to be grounded to work on something for a year or much longer time and then have something to release ready for the world to really test it out and it's no bug and it's actually 100 percent working versus the other way right because you know this is no longer 2013 anymore now we're like nine years later and you know nobody wants to get up uh, in the morning and see the news that oh these guys are hacked those guys are hacked right and obviously we can say to have the excuses that oh it's still a pretty new industry but we've been saying that for a night the last nine years maybe it's time to shift that a little bit right so mm -hmm. earlier what you mentioned bring die multi-chain is that uh through uh maker teleport is that the zoomed out view or that's more the the medium term view right so as soon as we release maker teleport i think uh for the next three to six months we're just going to be expanding the number of chains that it supports right so we're launching with arbitrum and optimism next week um, we'll have Starknet shortly after that. And then, you know, we'll probably try to tackle a bunch of the, the other EVM kind of chains, right? So we'll look at things like uh, ZK Sync. Uh, we'll look at things like Polygon, like Avalanche. Really anything that, that supports the EVM, we can do quite easily. Um, even things that don't support the EVM, right? Uh, so right, you have like Cosmos or, or Solana. Right. And you can still do that. It will just require a little bit uh, more complexity. On the subtlety, the detail side, I imagine you are in like a hundred group chats on Telegram with the people, folks from, from all these chains that you just mentioned, right? So, mm -hmm. um, so, so that's like please. the next three to six months, right? Then it's time for, you know, releasing the first iteration of Maker on, on another chain. And, uh, you know, without committing to anything, I would imagine that's something like Optimism or, or Arbitrum. And, and finally, right, uh, it, it's not just a technology problem, right? I, I think as, as engineers, we like to think of everything as an engineering problem, right? Uh, I, can, I can fix that. On the, the business side, right, there is loads and loads and loads to do, right? So DeFi has been able to grow remarkably large, right? Just based off of value that's available on chain, right? So the market caps of Ethereum and, and Bitcoin are large enough, right? That they can support bootstrapping this uh, DeFi ecosystem. But if you really want to grow, right? Uh, the total value of all crypto assets together are kind of just like a drop in the bucket compared to all of the assets that exist in the world. And for DeFi to kind of take that next step to, to evolve, it needs to start onboarding the assets, not just that are crypto native, but real world assets. And so we're making enormous kind of pushes in that direction as well. Um, Maker recently uh, closed a deal with uh, two banks. Uh, so one is Société Générale, which is one of the largest uh, French uh, banks. And uh, so they had a bond that they had issued on chain. So they were 
they were quite innovative in this respect compared to most other banks, right? The Societe Generale had actually issued a bond on Ethereum uh, that was backed by French uh, mortgages, right? So French housing bonds, uh, housing loans. Um, and uh, they recently used Maker to refinance those loans. Uh, so um, that I think is like the first time that like a major investment bank has like actually integrated with with a DeFi protocol. And so that's wow. really cool. Huge. That's huge. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And it kind of and it you know I think the the actual loan is quite small. I think it's like twenty to thirty million, but uh, it opens the door for for bigger things, right? And it shows the world and it shows other financial institutions, right? That, you know, you can do this, right? There are reputable people, there are benefits, right? Uh, there are safe uh, protocols, right? That, uh, that you can benefit from, right? Um, and the second bank um, is uh, not quite so well known. It's a, it's a much smaller bank. Uh, it's a, a community kind of regional bank in the US called HV Bank. And it's, uh, I believe it's about, it's quite old though. It's, uh, it's almost 250 years old. And uh, they uh, kind of specialize in giving out loans for kind of home uh, flipping, right? So, uh, and, and kind of construction, right? So when someone buys a home, right, they need like a short term uh, loan to remodel it, right? Before they can sell it again. So like a three-year loan, you know, four or five year loan, right? quite short term, very high interest rate, right? Um, and the bank has become very, very adept at uh, making these types of loans, but they don't have access to um, credit at competitive rates, right? So the US Federal Reserve, right, uh, as no doubt all the listeners will probably be aware, right, uh, has been raising yeah. the interest rates, right? Raising the interest rates. Right. And uh, might have happened just a little bit. Sure, and 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 that and that and that is the rate, right? That um, yeah. essentially the banks get charged when they are borrowing money, right? And then they lend it to individuals like you and I, right? For you know an even more jacked up rate. Um, but uh, so so here's the thing, right? If it becomes really expensive to lend from the Fed um, because the rates are high. Um, banks will start looking at other places to source liquidity. And so if you look at something like Maker, right? Um, Maker has DAI pegged yes. to the dollar. Yes. Right. Um, there is enormous amounts of liquidity to convert your DAI into real dollars, right? I think the Maker protocol has something like... Uh, almost 4 billion USDC or, or a total of other stable coins like uh, Paxos USD and Gemini USD, right? So you can, and you can redeem it one-to-one, -one, no fees, no slippage, right? So if you have a hundred million DAI, you can convert it to a hundred million USDC to a hundred million dollars in your bank account, no fees, no slippage. So, if you compare the rate that the Fed is charging, right, which is somewhere around, what is the federal funds rate right now? Uh, it is 3.25%. And you compare that to Maker's rate, which is 1.5% on, on ETH right now. Wow. Maker is much more competitive. Yeah. The bank can uh, make, uh, you know, 1.5%, probably 1 1.5% to 2% more per loan that they extend. Uh, by sourcing capital from Maker instead of sourcing capital from, say, the Federal Reserve. So, you know, that's that's really interesting, right? So we did a deal with HV Bank where we extended them 200 million of uh, of credit um, in DAI. Right? They convert that to USDC, convert that to dollars, and now they have more capital to make these uh, make these loans. Right, and in order to keep them honest, right, we have a clause in you know the uh, agreement, right, that uh, uh, half of all the loans that they extend, right, half of every loan, they need yes. to keep on their books, 
right? So they need to keep exposure to that loan and, and that kind of ensures incentive alignment, right? Because we, right. Both, we don't want them to make bad loans, right? Uh, using Obviously. big money and then not having, yeah. and then selling the bag to someone else and not having any exposure, right? That, uh, so this way it kind of keeps them honest, right? If they need to keep at least half of the loan on their book, right? Uh, then they're going to be incentivized to only make good loans. Yes. And, and so it's, it's, you know, these types of things, right? You think, okay, 200 million compared to 7 billion die, right? It's not that much. It's just a tiny piece. But doing these types of, uh, these types of experiments, right? Are kind of seeing what gets traction, you know, what works, what doesn't work, what legal structures are best. It's like planting seeds, right? And uh, they're they're going to they're going to grow, right? You don't know what kind of seeds they are, you know, uh, you don't know what they're going to grow into, but uh, they will grow, right? And uh, you just have to make sure you plant a lot of them, and make sure that you're not um, over investing into any one seed, right? In case something goes wrong, right? So keep it small, so if it blows up, right, the damage is contained, right, and everything yeah. is fine. It reflects this philosophy, right, of do things slowly, methodically, and in a safe way where if something goes wrong, right, it's okay. Yes. It sounds like at Maker, you guys definitely don't put all the eggs in one basket, which is nope. important. And this quote I really like from the book uh, written by Sun Tzu called Art of War. He said opportunity like seeds that they actually multiply themselves. The more... Although you call it experiment, for, for, for me, they are like very calculated and thoughtful moves, right? Or business experiments. Nicholas, I know you're a busy guy. You probably have to run soon. But before that, I have like two more questions and for us to discuss. Earlier, you shared insights that you have about DeFi. What are something that is still missing that are very, very important still, right? Would you mind explain? die in a way that a 13 year old would understand Th those are those are two separate questions right yes one yes. is what is DeFi missing and one is explaining yes. die to a 13 yes. year old yes wow um hmm. yeah which one would you like to go with first wow man um I don't, the, the 13 year old sounds interesting okay yeah please please oh my god I'm, i really hope this is like a smart 13 year old yeah, yeah, yeah. Go for it. Why is money valuable? Um, why do the dollars or the euros that you have in paper form, you know, why why are we using that? Why aren't we using seashells? Why aren't we using Legos? Why aren't we using candy? Right? You love candy. You think candy is valuable. The answer is that money can actually be anything. Right, money is just a tool that people use to exchange value. Right, so money is a tool. Money on its own is is not actually valuable. Money just has a a purpose, and that purpose makes it really useful. And so, anything can be money as long as it's useful. Right, for exchange things. And so, die is just like money. Uh, DAI can be used to buy things. It can be used to pay people for their jobs, right? I get paid in DAI. I pay my team in DAI. And there is a whole economy that is built not around euros or around you know paper dollars, but around DAI. And it's no different than you know, what you see every day, right? Where you go to the grocery store and, and you spend your, your dollars or your euros, it's exactly the same. I think you're gonna love it because it's, um, yeah, I think using candy and, and then a concept of money, it, it explains that they'll be very helpful. And also a quick comment, nowadays the teenagers are actually much more mature than we have thought. I remember I was on, uh, on the surfing trip in, um, Portugal and one of the kids, he actually, um, he came with his mom, he lives in New York 
and they actually had classes about cryptocurrency and NFT, or not exactly classes, but their activity groups, and they talk about NFTs and crypto. And wow. he's, I think, exactly when he was 15, 16 years old. My mind was blown. So that's crazy. That, yeah, that's, that's really inspiring for, uh, right? for the next generation. Yes, absolutely. And yesterday I did a Twitter Spaces, and um, it just hit me during meditation, right? But I tell them that DeFi and what we're doing every day is no longer impacting our lives and the lives of the users, right? But nowadays, the kids look at the things that we have done, more especially you guys and Maker have done. They look at you guys as some one that is established and uh, your application may be for younger generation for them is like apple or ibm level of something that's very very established and the things that we are doing might have such profound impact for the next five ten years of their lives right because for them it's going to be like this is the new standard maybe for for us we still experimenting things but for them it's going to be like this is reality this is a lot of the things had is done we laid down foundation for them that hit me yesterday i was super profound was, and, and wow, that's I that's guess. how we're going to become boomers yeah because they they look at DeFi <laughs> right now and they look at it yeah. differently than than we look at it i think right we look at Absolutely. it and we go like wow we built this really cool innovative thing and you touched on this right to them that's normal that's the standard. Yes. They don't think of us as, as innovators. They're just like, oh, that's just some normal thing. So when they innovate, they're going to take it to another level, right? Yes. Uh, another level that you and I can, can't even conceive because it's just uh, we have too many assumptions, right, about how the world works, right? And they, they grew up in a different world than we grew up. So I'm, you know, that, that to me is just very exciting, right? Uh, you know, the next generation is going to keep pushing it one step further, two steps further, right? And, and that's how we make progress. Yes, absolutely. That's amazing. Nicholas, one last one. What do you see that is missing that is yet to be tapped in or a big problem we yet need to be solved in DeFi? I'm going to do the cop-out answer, which is uh, the identity problem. We need to have identity on chain. It doesn't need to be your government identity. Right? It just needs to be a identity right, that is somehow linked to, to you um, and, and that can't be, can't be faked and, and can't be replaced. One, it's going to have extremely useful implications right, for things like data theft right, and the this, this selling of, of your data right, and monetization of your data that the internet kind of web two model has really... Um, you know, kind of like adopted, right? Uh, here's yes. a free website, here's a free service, and then we steal all of your data and we sell it, right? As soon as you have identity um, on chain and you have uh, applications that need to request the exact right permissions of what they're going to do with that data. Um, and, you know, cryptographically, they cannot violate the boundaries of what you set to do with that data. We're going to give people a lot more control over what information is out there about themselves and how that information can be used. And uh, that's, that's going to change a lot of things, right? Because new business models will have to evolve that don't just come from exploiting this, uh, this data harvesting economy. And my personal hope is that it would lead people to take their privacy a little bit more seriously, but uh, it's a choice. Right. I think some people choose to put a lot of information about themselves out there. And uh, I, I defend their, their right to, to make that choice. Uh, but the, the other thing that identity will bring uh, for DeFi specifically is that right now, right, uh, DeFi is very capital inefficient. Right. And it's because you need to all these, this lending that happens needs to be over collateralized. Right. So if you want to borrow, $50, you need to put $100 worth of Ethereum, right, into Maker or into Aave or into Compound or, or any kind of DeFi lending protocol, right? And, and that's because we don't know who's borrowing from us. There's no recourse, right, if you don't pay the loan back. And so the only way to secure the loan 
is by ensuring right that the loan is secured by collateral. That's very safe, but it's not efficient, right? Um, a lot of people need to borrow because they don't have collateral. I don't want to get too far into a tangent here, right? But uh, people people tend to borrow on credit. That's how a lot of lending works. And so DeFi really needs to make that next step as well. But I, the identity problem is kind of the keystone that will unlock the the ability to to do that. Very precise and very important as well, right? Nicholas, the first question for the next episode of podcast with you, which I hope I hope is going to be soon, is going to have you, you know, totally dive deeper, even much deeper than this issue, because I feel like there's, you know, we're like revealing a little bit like tip of the iceberg here, right? Because this is probably like, you know, I don't know, like 80% or much more uh, yet need to be unpacked when it comes to uh, the identity and how to make DeFi much more capital efficiency, uh, efficient. Nicholas, what is your Twitter? Where can people find you? Cool. Yeah, Twitter is uh, nomos, N-O-M-O-S, uh, underscore paradox. You can also follow Chronicle Labs on Twitter. It's actually a, a Twitter account going back to like 2012 or something uh, that we managed to like secure. So even though we, we only started it about a, a year or so ago, like uh, we have this really like ancient, almost like grandfather Twitter account. Uh, yeah, so so follow that one to get any updates uh, on uh, on tech stuff uh, like uh, the oracles on Maker Teleport and uh, anything else that we have kind of cooking in the in the kitchen. Absolutely, thank you so much. Well, ladies and gentlemen, all the audience out there, so happy and glad to have Nicholas on the podcast today. Not only a very handsome person <laughs> with a beautiful oh, smile, you. with a great smile, but also be able to explain very complex things into very simple examples that hopefully a 13 years old will understand or i would say that also quite grounded with their moves with their experiments and with the product they're cooking in their kitchen so personally appreciate you and your team you guys work and hopefully i can represent the whole industry as well show its gratitude and acknowledge you guys because I mean, I, with all the innovation, right? I just, as the beginning of the podcast, we mentioned, it's like building a spaceship. It's taking so much time. And usually that when we think about something, maybe it'll take, even we are very grounded and have an uh, expectation, maybe you think like it's going to take eight months, but usually it'll take 20% at least extra time, right? So, and with all the great innovation, it takes so much time and diligent work. So want to acknowledge you and everybody from your side on bringing this vision to the world so appreciate that and definitely let's have you back here soon like in a month or so if you have some time brother thank you for for having me you know um it takes you know all of us right to create the future right like me and my team we can build it but you know we need people like you right to to get the message out we're not, especially on the engineering side, right? We're not that good at explaining complex things sometimes. Uh, so, right, uh, it's it's a fight that we all um, we all have to push forward, right? If if we want to make uh, crypto and and DeFi succeed, I appreciate that. Which really quick common, and I think I mentioned to you when we were getting a coffee the other time, that when you told me you're an engineer, I was actually quite surprised because I think that you are very good at explaining things and uh, making complex concept to explain them in very possible way and in a quite fun way as well, right? So want to let you know about that. Well, ladies and gentlemen, don't be a stranger. Make sure to subscribe, follow Nicholas, and we'll take it from here. See you soon, brother. Okay. Thank you.